Before we get started with today's interview, just a quick reminder, click the thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and ding the bell so that you don't miss any of the great interviews that we have coming up. Now on to today's interview. Welcome back, everybody. Today, my guest is composer Suzanne Dawson. Her piece on the new National Federation of Music Club's piano solo list is Ants in Your Pants. You can find it in her book, Buggity Buglets. Thank you so much for being here today, Suzanne. Thanks so much. This is a really fun piece. It's kind of silly, but it's just one of these pieces that has so much character to it that I think students are really going to enjoy playing it. Talk to us a little bit about what we should focus on with our students as we're teaching them Ants in Your Pants. This one has a lot of these little uh, indications, these little directions that we have in music that people don't see a lot with the, the coda and the DCL coda. And yeah, those are just new and it's, it's just um, different for them to work on that. But that's not the whole point of Ants in Your Pants. Just needed to fit it on one page. Absolutely. And what kinds of things do, what technical challenges does this piece present students with? Well, you've got combinations of legato touch and staccato going on at the same time. And then you've got the distance of a sixth in the left hand, which for lots of students at this level, it's it's a little bit challenging because they're usually focused on that fifth but now they have to open their hand up a little bit. So there's crescendos at measure seven and, and then again at 13 when we have those half steps and there's more tension and uh, it's, a, it's one of the highlights of the piece. So how do you work with your students to help them to approach crescendos in places like that? Well, you probably experienced this one too. It's very hard for them to do a crescendo. Oftentimes they just go from soft suddenly to mezzo forte. There, it's hard for them to get grasped. How do we make that? How do we get enough control? And once I make the, sure they learn everything, they've got all the nuts and bolts of the piece down. So their rhythm is correct. Everything's correct. And then we can go in and start messing with those little nuances, like starting very soft. And usually if we do it slowly, they can grab the the technique a little better. Those are great tips. What else would you like us to know about Ants in Your Pants? I liked this piece. I thought it was fun writing it. It does go fast, which of course they love. Um, I usually let the students choose which piece they want one out of the book. And for some, some reason, I think I need to play them for the students first, but they tend to want to follow the title of the piece. And then they say, I want to do that one. And so at the very end of this piece, there's a tempo change. There's an indication of faster. So how much faster should this be? Well, how, what was your intention as a composer here? Well, it was one of those endings that you, you want to just punch it out, you know. Um, and then there's a fermata right before the faster part there. So um, it's a good exercise in changing tempos. I think they can go as fast as they want or as fast as they can because it's fun. <laughs> so, but then they're going to have to go up an octave with their right hand. So they've got to be able to do that, but they have a rest to do that too. So I think it's a, up to the student really. Otherwise I would have probably given them a tempo mark. I love how you designed in that rest to give students time to move and, and to kind of ease one of the bigger technical challenges of this piece. Suzanne Dawson, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing these insights about your piece. Suzanne Dawson's piece on the new National Federation of Music Clubs festivals list is Ants in Your Pants. You can find it in her piece, Buggity Buglets, at fine quality music retailers near you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Sam. <laughs>